Good morning, Ravens, and happy opening day. Welcome to today's edition of ONW Now. I'm Grace Jerzak. And I'm Jacob Guernsey. On today's show, we'll take a look back, at look back at Imagine Media Festival, the March for Our Lives, and Job Olympics, and more. Last Saturday, students from 23 different high schools gathered here at ONW for Ecom's Imagine Ceremony. Addison Smith takes us inside the event. I love Imagine! Red carpet, bright lights, the coveted pixel. Much like the Oscars or Golden Globes, the Imagine Awards Ceremony recognizes and rewards visual arts created by students across Kansas and... It's pretty energetic here right now. There's a lot of people. We have some good M&Ms. Emily Fails, a junior here at ONW, joined the eCommunication Academy this year and has already accomplished what not many students can say they've done. I was nominated for three different awards in the top five and it was for the categories of typography, vector graphics, and music video. I won uh, my first pixel in vector graphics, which was my self-portrait, and my second pixel was in music video with my group. While Emily has put in long hours and hard work in order to catch up and learn the basic skills of video composition in designing graphics, she couldn't have done it without the motivation and help from peers and instructors. Emily spends a lot of time with me in room 1201 before and after school working on our projects and so whenever she has questions or needs something I'm just right there to help her out and sometimes we even come up on Saturdays so they can work on filming projects too. I was just very excited for her because I know that she's very well deserving of the honor. As a newcomer in the program, Emily has quickly gained respect among others and is excited to see what awards and nominations she can win in the future. To see Emily's work and the top five nominations in each category, go to eravens.net. Awesome job, Emily. We'd also like to give a big shout out to the Convergence team for sweeping the news package category. Senior Austin Shively is a man of many talents, being involved in theater, stucco, and debate and forensics. Shelby Orton gives us a look at another achievement, this time with the National Speech and Debate Association. Recently, Austin Shively became the number one NSDA point holder in school history. So this is a really big achievement for Austin because, of course, even though our history is not that long, we've had a number of really strong competitors go through this program. I'm competing in speech and debate all four years of high school. Um, so right now I'm at 2,990, um, and I still have five-ish tournaments to go to, and then hopefully nationals, so hopefully we'll keep counting them. Throughout Austin's four years of speech and debate, he has collected many points for many different events. Points are accumulated over like all four years of high school, and there's a combination of like, service points, debate points, speech points, and service points. So the service points mostly come from performing in like, musicals or plays in school or out of school. You can get accumulate points from that. Um, debate, it's based off of wins and losses. And then when it's like, forensics or speech season, it's based off of how you perform in each individual round. And then Congress points are also based off of like, speeches that you give. So I would say that I've gotten the most points from duo with um, Evan Svetlak. She's been my duo partner all four, year, all four years. And we've been pretty successful in that event. I would say that's where my, most of my points come from. The total was 2,990 points, just competitions represents about 500 perfect performances or 700 really good ones. For ONW Now, this has been Shelby Orton. Congrats, Austin! Oh my god, congrats, Austin! <laughs> good job, Austin! Congrats, Austin! Many e-communication and engineering academy students participate in the first 1710 FIRST robotics team here at Olathe Northwest. This team is more than just robots. They have multiple subgroups that all work together to win the competitions they attend. Mallory McDonald gives us the de details. Our core values on Team 1710 are commitment, hands-on experience, inspiration, great I've been on the team for four years. Each year, the average team member spends about 400 plus hours on the team, but for other members like build team members, you put in extra time. And so sometimes we are here on Saturdays from 8 in the morning until 2 in the morning. While being on FIRST Robotics might take a lot of hard work and long days, it doesn't come without its rewards. At the Iowa Regional, we ended up winning the Safety Award, and we also won the Innovation and Control Award. So at the Heartland Regional this year, we first we won the whole competition with our robot, and then we also won the Chairman's Award, the most prestigious award that FIRST gives out. It's very rare for a team to win the Regional in two different ways, but that's what we did this year. 
After winning the Chairman's Award and with our robot at the Heartland Regional, we are now going to international championships in Houston in a few weeks. We'll be competing with teams all over the world from countries such as Turkey, China, and Australia. The competition First Robotics competes in changes every year. The game this year announced six weeks before each first team has to put away their built robot until competition. It's called First Power Up and is modeled after a retro video game. There's three different scales or teeter-totters on the field. Each a team is assigned a different side of that scale and they basically have to place these cubes on either side of that scale. The students that participate in FIRST are able to get experiences that most people don't learn until after high school. So it's really easy to say um, FIRST is just robots, but that's not actually what it is. Our team is actually divided into like 14 different leadership positions. It's this, FIRST is this interdisciplinary environment that really helps you build up yourself as an individual. I've been able to learn how to talk to people, how to talk in front of people, how to plan an event, but then also how to operate machinery in the shops and how to wire an electrical board, and it's been absolutely amazing. Now let's swing it over to Game Day Northwest for everything Raven Athletics. What's up Ravens? Welcome to this week's edition of Game Day Northwest. Today we have updates on swim, track, softball, and a little football. Girls Swim and Dive Team had their latest city meet at PRT. Maddie Fensman and Emily Copeland took first and second in diving and are moving on to state. Brooke Elam took fourth in diving, Lauren Pugh took second in the 100 free and first in the 100 back and qualified for state in both events. Brandon Van Op Brayton Van Opdorp took 4th in the 200 free and 5th in the 500. Abigail Shanklin took 6th in the 200 IM and 2nd in the 100 fly. The 200 free, re free relay team of Lauren Pugh, Hannah Fuller, Brayton Van Opdorp, and Macy Standen took 3rd. The Lady Ravens have their next meet at Shine Ocean South on Tuesday. The Raven track fleets took to ODAC last Friday for their Latham meet. The Ravens were very successful with numerous top placers. Congratulations to Maddie Ryder for winning the high jump, long jump, and 200 meter. Connor Boyd for winning the discus and setting the school record and nabbing that gold in the shot put. Mario Hansen won the long jump and Cole Morris won the 800 meters. The Ravens track team has their next meet tomorrow at the Blue Valley S Spring Classic. The Lady Ravens softball team squared off against Lawrence Free State on Tuesday night at Seabeck. It was a chilly and rainy game, and the ladies struggled to get something going off the bat. The ladies unfortunately fell to Free State 8-1. ONW's single run came in the fourth inning on an RBI single by Lauren Beggs that, that scored Shayna Espy. The Lady Ravens are back in action tonight at ODAC at 5.30 against rival Olathe South. Come out and support the softball team. The Lady Ravens football team scored started off their season Tuesday night against Blue Valley North, the team they lost to last season in the playoffs. It was a very low-scoring game, alternating drives down the pitch, but, go but the keepers weren't letting anything by. This game would be sided by defense. A corner kick that was blocked out of nowhere by Taylor Reens got the ball, took the ball down the field, and the ball couldn't find a way into the net. The game remained scoreless. With five minutes left in the second half, the Ravens keeper... Kaylee Kappelman made a clutch stop by to get the go uh, to keep it scoreless, sending the game into overtime. But the game was uh, would this be an omen? Yes, it would. Blue Valley missed a shot to go to win, but Northwest had the chance as Mia Hake takes it and puts the ball back into the net to end the game one nil, with a great way to start off the season, ladies. So with that, thanks for tuning in to Gator Northwest. Now back to the news desk. The Raven men's golf team was also at Deer Creek yesterday and ended up playing fourth as a team with Cole Ferris finishing in eighth. Good game, Ravens. The boys will be back on the course at Lake Quivira on Monday, so come out and show your support. This past Saturday, March for Our Lives was held in downtown KC. This organization is run by Hashtag Never Again MSD, a group of kids who survived the Valentine's Day mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Along with Every Town for Gun Safety, a gun control activist their lives due to school shootings. Attendees were allowed to bring signs as well as food, drinks, and chairs to sit in. The group is looking for change and hoping to accomplish safety for students in the future. On Tuesday, ONW's CBR program took part in the annual Job Olympics competition at JCCC. So Job Olympics, Job Olympics um, is an opportunity for our friends in interpersonal skills to go and practice um, activities that they would do at a real job. So they're all going to get jobs one day, and that's just another um, practice time for them so they can be able to know what to do when they do have a job. 
I like the, the, the seven envelopes. There are 25 events set up for different ability levels, and this year they competed in 19. With hard work of the group, was able to bring home eight silver and five bronze medals. They were also able to take home many other ribbons, ranging from fourth to tenth place, and even ending up placing third overall. Congratulations to this amazing group of students. That's all for this week's edition of ONW Now. Don't forget to follow us on Snapchat at ONW Now and on Twitter at ONW underscore Raven Daily to keep up with Northwest news. For Jacob Grunzi and the rest of the Convergence team, I'm Grace Jerzak. Tune in tomorrow for the Raven Minute and again next week for another ONW Now. Have a great day, Northwest.